think our halfpipe guys really have the opportunity to dominate again the way that they did in 02. Um, the halfpipe women, I think, we by far have the four best women riders in the world. Um, with Border Cross, we've got a great crew of guys. Uh, you know, Border Cross is one of those kind of intangibles. A lot of stuff could go wrong um, when you're racing head to head with other people. So, you know, hopefully whoever ends up making the team, um, you know, gets a clean race once we're there at the games. Uh, you know, both Graham Watanabe and myself rode really well down in South America, and so we're kind of, you know, definitely a lot further ahead in the qualifying process than anyone else. But, uh, you know, we've got a we've got a really strong crew of guys, so I, I think we're going to put in some good showings. And, you know, Lindsay Jacob Ellis has been absolutely dominant the last four years, and I'm pretty sure she's fired up to come back and get the gold that she missed out on last time. I think the opportunity of having it, you know, kind of in our backyard is a huge thing. Um, you know, I think we're going to get a lot more you know, fans able to just drive up. I think, you know, at least for following it, um, I think with the way that the timing goes and with the TV airing of everything, you know, having it in a Pacific Coast time zone is going to be a lot better off than, you know, people having known the results six hours ahead of time um, last time around in Torino. So I think, you know, hopefully that can just add to the whole excitement of it for the American public that, it, you know, it's going to be happening live. People are going to be see it, seeing it as it goes on um, and that kind of the real drama of what those events can be can, you know, not be spoiled by people having, you know, the information of what had already transpired. You know, from 98 until now, the level of the sport has grown phenomenally, you know. Um, I was just reading an article, actually, when I stopped in Portland on the way down here about some of the new, you know, tricks that Sean White's working on um, for this year. And it's the level that the half pipe has, you know, grown to, um, in these four Olympic cycles, people are going to be blown away when they see what's going on um, there in Vancouver. And then, you know, with us, I think what the border cross has really brought to it is a more kind of sport specific type of racing. You know, I, I used to race the GS stuff as a kid. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily the most representative of our sport anymore. I think the um, direction of the sport has changed a lot since that was first uh, admitted into the Olympic Games. But I mean, I think as far as the freestyle and the border cross goes, it's you know truly impressive the level of athleticism that's out there, and you know it absolutely belongs in the Olympics, and you know is going to be a major contributor to the U.S. Medal Hall there. The whole experience of winning is you know it's what you dream about from the time that you're a kid. You know to be able to for me having gone in in my first games. Um, and kind of had that complete experience, uh, it's pretty indescribable, you know. I, you realize really at that moment how much of it um, is based around the national pride on that day and, um, and, you know, all the help that you had from other people. You really gain a much greater sense of having accomplished it for your nation um, than you do, you know, at an average World Cup or at some other event. It's really, I think the importance of that um, really comes out when you're getting to live through that experience. It's it's a pretty powerful thing. I, I hope that everyone's competing clean in sport. You know, I don't want to have to go up against someone who's doing performance enhancing drugs. So um, I think it plays a really important role in sport as far as keeping it, um, you know, keeping the, the playing field level. The procedures that they've put in place, um, you know, especially if you know, someone like myself, I've been involved in the anti with the anti-doping agency since 1998. I have a perfect record with them. Um, you know, this new policy that they enacted last year of, um, you know, having to set aside one hour out of every day where you basically sit at your house and you tell them that you're going to sit at your house and wait for them. Um, you know, it's 365 hours in a year, which is a lot of time. Um, and it's... You know, I wish that they would come up with some better means of being able to communicate with us when they want to test. I mean, I'm, I'm all for random testing. I think it's the only way that they can get accurate results. But, um, you know, for an organization that ends up affecting that much of your daily life, it really is kind of a pain for the athletes. I, you know, it would be nice if they could come up with a better uh, scenario for, you know, locating athletes and um, and being able to test them in and out of competition pool. Um, I don't think it affects my training. It just, uh, it affects your spontaneity in life. I mean, you, you literally, 
you know, at midnight, by midnight the night before, you need to have registered. Um, and, you know, all kinds of things come up in life. And it's, I, you know, it's a pain that, um, you know, I, I've literally had plane flights changed and gotten a missed test because you're dealing with things that are out of your control and you're not in a, um, you know, it's easier nowadays with Blackberries and stuff, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's a pain to stay updated with them all the time when you're constantly traveling like that. And it's, you know, when weather affects what your travel plans are, there's no way that, you know, any of us have control over all that. So it's, it's hard when they don't have understanding about scenarios like that.